Hello, and welcome to this video overview of the RxG monitoring capabilities. In this video, I will demonstrate how the RxG can monitor everything from the current speed on a WAN uplink to the ping response time of a downstream access point. Let's jump right into it. Let's browse to Instruments Network Monitor. The first thing you will notice here is the status of all the access points connected to my lab RxG. At a glance, you can see that I have two access points that the RxG is aware of, and one of those is currently down. Just to the right of that, you can see the channel distribution of the monitored access points. Here we see that I have one AP on channel 7 in the 2.4 GHz spectrum, and one AP on channel 140 in the 5 GHz spectrum. Outside of a lab environment with more access points, this dashboard can help you to quickly check if you are using all of the spectrum available to you. Historically, I have used these widgets to quickly identify wireless controllers that throw every access point on channel 1 and channel 36. Just below the widgets, we will see the wireless client scaffold. This information is pulled in from the associated wireless controller. There is a lot of valuable information provided in this scaffold, but where I use this most often is when I get the call that a particular subscriber is either having connectivity issues or throughput issues. Seeing the SNR and the channel saturation in one view is really helpful to quickly determine if I should chase a wired or wireless issue. As we continue down the page here, we see all of the wired clients. I use this scaffold most often when I am looking to see what port a particular device is connected through. Another piece of helpful information is this link speed column on the end. When I am chasing down wired client performance issues, seeing if they connected at a full gig could help me identify legacy devices or even bad patch cables. If I know the switch is gig capable and they only connected at 100 megabits per second, something is up. Ping targets can yield so much valuable information. The concept is quite simple. You can add a target IP address and the RxG will continuously ping it. These pings can be pointed to a destination on the WAN or LAN of the RxG. All of the data generated by the pings are logged into the database, and you can even configure alerts to know when an issue is being experienced. Taking this one step further, if you attached a ping target to a WAN uplink, you could configure thresholds for round-trip time, jitter, or packet loss to help determine the health of the uplink. If an uplink is considered unhealthy, it can be taken offline and have a secondary link promoted until the primary can be fixed. Clicking the graph button here on a specific target will also show you historical graphing data for ping response times, uptime, and jitter. In addition to the continuous monitoring for uptime, I use ping targets quite often to troubleshoot problematic devices. Setting up a ping target on the LAN lets me know when the device is on or off the network, as well as the quality of the connection over time. This, coupled with email alerts, can help me to better understand the experience of a device without having to depend on the information from the end user. One last use case that I want to mention with ping targets is that you can also use them to understand the experience end users have to reach specific cloud-based services. For example, let's say that a user reports intermittent connectivity to a remote file server. Adding a ping target will help you to track the reachability of the server as well as the quality of the connection. Let's move on to the next scaffold here for speed tests. This is another location where having such a simple capability installed at the border between the WAN and the LAN makes so much sense. Similar to ping targets, speed tests are quite simple. You can configure an internet-based server or an iPerf server and schedule periodic speed tests. These tests can also be coupled with notifications so that if a test fails to meet the thresholds you configured X amount of times, you can be alerted. Just like the ping targets, these tests can be pointed north or southbound of the RxG. Every network engineer I know can relate to this use case. You receive a phone call or a service ticket that an end user is experiencing slow speeds. Of course, they are running a speed test from their client device to some sort of cloud-based server, which does not help much when you are trying to isolate where the issue may exist. Let's think about a proactive approach to this issue first. If an issue does exist, wouldn't it be nice to get a heads up before the end user reports it? With RxG, this is possible. All you have to do is put an inexpensive device capable of running an iPerf server at critical service areas of your network. 
This could be one in each building, or every other floor, or one in each IDF, and then configure the RxG to run periodic speed tests. These devices could be wired or wireless, or both. Anytime one of them fails to hit your configured threshold, you would be alerted. Additionally, you can place targets on the WAN side of the RxG as well, to test your WAN connectivity. If you don't have access to be able to put an iPerf server in an appropriate location on the WAN, you can select a public server that is already configured in the dropdown on the RxG. Of course, all this data is logged in the RxG's database for historical viewing. If you find yourself in more of a responsive situation, you may want to use the RxG as the iPerf server and then have client devices run speed tests against it. This can help you to quickly isolate the location of any slowdown that may exist in the infrastructure. Let's browse to Services, Servers, iPerf Server, and click Create New. In this scaffold, you can determine if iPerf 2 or 3 should be used and who on the LAN or WAN should be able to access the service. Once the service is enabled, you can then run the iPerf client software on any device and run tests across your infrastructure from different points to isolate the issue. Once you complete your testing, be sure to deactivate the service so that it is not a possible point of abuse. Okay. Let's change gears for a moment and look specifically at wired and wireless network infrastructure monitoring capabilities. Browse to Network Wireless. The very first scaffold here, WLAN controllers, gives us the ability to add a WLAN controller for communication with the RxG. The RxG uses a variety of protocols to communicate with a WLAN controller, such as RADIUS, SNMP, API, and SSH. The key thing that I want to bring your attention to on this screen is the monitoring checkbox. Enabling this box results in the RxG attempting to import and synchronize access points from the device, as well as perform ping monitoring of the infrastructure device itself, and collect CPU and memory statistics where possible. After this feature is enabled, if an AP should fall offline, the RxG will trigger a health notice and let you know. Also, remember that dashboard at the beginning of this video? It will be updated as well. If I scroll down just a bit further, under the access point scaffold, I can see which APs are up and down and how long they have been up or if they are down when they were last seen. You can also see here that the software version and other helpful information have been provided. Let's jump to Network Wired. This section operates much like the wireless section by allowing you to connect switches directly to the RxG for monitoring and in some cases, we can push configuration changes to both wired and wireless devices. I think that functionality deserves a video of its own, so I won't dive into that now. I want to draw your attention to the switch ports that have been imported down here at the bottom. From this scaffold, I can see the up and down status of each port, and things like the port speed configuration versus what was actually negotiated. I will circle back to Link Neighbor in just a sec, but check out these links here on the right hand side. By clicking Graph, I can see the historical usage of this particular interface. In addition, clicking through these other links, I can see errors, discards, packets, and even what clients are detected hanging off the port. I know you have heard it before, but in the RxG, everything really does talk to everything else. And of course, just like with the WLAN controller and the access points, should a switch go offline, the RxG will issue a health notice, and if enabled, you will receive an email informing you. However, it could also be a knock team or a ticketing system receiving that email as well. Okay, I have saved the best for last. Let's take a look at the network dashboard by simply clicking on the word network here at the top. Isn't this cool? The RxG has created a network topology based on the information that it was able to discover automatically. The RxG uses LLDP to discover these devices. It is necessary to configure an LLDP server under Services, Servers, LLDP servers. Just make sure here that Listen Only is unchecked. Also, if the downstream switches are not controlled by the RxG, they will require manual configuration. As you can see by this example, I have an extreme switch, a ruckus ICX switch, and an access point. This diagram shows you exactly how everything is connected together, down to the specific port number. And the best part is that I did not have to make this topology. It was automatically generated. 
If I click on either switch, it will zoom in and show me just the connections to that particular switch. Now, as I click through these selectors here at the bottom, I can also bring up a view of the RXG itself. This view is automatically updated as I make configuration changes to the RXG. Here I can see that I have two uplinks and I'm using two ports downstream with one not configured. There's even a button here to click if you would like to export the image. Well guys, I want to thank you for watching this video on the RxG's capability to monitor the network and network devices. If you want to revisit any of the sections that I covered, there are direct links in the video description. I would also recommend that you check out these videos as well to learn more about the capabilities of the RxG platform. Have a good one!